So today, the Nintendo Switch Lite was announced, and uh, some people are really excited, some people are kind of ho-hum, some people don't really care. Uh, if you own an original Switch, it doesn't really replace that unless you're looking to own a second Switch in your life exclusively for portable needs. Uh, they got some interesting stuff going on. The Pokemon Sword and Shield design is really neat. Uh, but what I actually wanted to do is take this opportunity to kind of go back and look at what have all the rumors and reports been out there. Now, I'm talking about actual rumors and reports, not speculation. Um, in regards to the Switch Mini, which we now know as the Switch Lite, and the Switch Pro, and what we can extrapolate from this to believe for the Nintendo Switch Pro. Now, these are by far not every report out of there, but these are the ones that come from reliable places. So Nikkei out of Japan, Wall Street Journal, and Eurogamer are the three in particular I'm going to be referencing here. Uh, and I got all of these um, articles I found on Nintendo Life. So I'm going to give credit to Nintendo Life for kind of gathering this information up because a lot of this, like from Nikkei, from Wall Street, like I can't read Japanese, so that doesn't help me there. Uh, and the stuff from the Wall Street Journal... Um, it requires a subscription, which I, my, my subscription's expired at the moment, so I can't really show you the Wall Street Journal stuff. Uh, so I'll put a link to all of Nintendo Life stuff down here. It's like, I don't know, six or seven different links. Uh, and these date back to last year. Rumors about the Switch Pro, by the way, have been going on for two years. Rumors about the Switch Mini have been going on for a little over a year. Uh, so there are sources you can find for this stuff way back when, but they were just really vague. Uh, the stuff we have from basically October last year to now has been much more detailed. And uh, these are the three sources that I feel like nailed everything with the Switch Mini and might have useful insights for the Switch Pro. So let's just look at it and see what we got. So uh, this was back in October, October 4th year, 2018. Rumor a new Switch goes plan for late 2019. Uh, and essentially what it says is that... Uh, this is like the first major Switch Pro rumor where it's like, okay, all this other stuff was like whispered on 4chan, but like this is a legit source, Wall Street Journal telling you Switch Pro is real. Uh, it'll have, you know, newer screen tech. It'll try to make the Switch lighter. Right now it's a little over a half inch thick. Uh, they want to make it lighter and thinner, a brighter display. This is where we heard that they're going to do new stuff with the display on the Switch Pro. Keep that in mind because that's with the Switch Pro, not the Mini. All right, uh, moving on. We end up with this one from January 31st, uh, um, and this one basically says, uh, from Nick A, suggests a smaller, more affordable hardware is on the way. This is where we first started hearing a little bit about a Switch Mini, uh, and they basically said it would release this year, uh, it would be smaller, uh, and it would remove certain functions that cut the overall cost of the unit, uh, all things to be expected. Um, actually, I think there was uh, one from March here first. Uh Oh, that's June. All right. So here, uh, this one talks about, you know, how the Switch Mini could be key to NVIDIA's financial revival. This was more of a speculative thing uh, where NVIDIA basically suggested uh, that they were going to see an expected growth in the mobile gaming uh, GPU market. And uh, people read that between the lines as, oh, there must be a new Nintendo Switch launching. Uh, so that was just kind of a, a thing that existed out there. And right, then you get to this one. This was from June 13th. Um, and this one talked about us uh, moving switch manufacturing to China, two new models. This also was from the Wall Street Journal. And it, it basically just mentions, hey, look, uh, we're going to be moving manufacturing outside of China just in case those tariffs come through. Uh, we now heard that it apparently looks like Vietnam might have been the, the source of where they're sourcing out uh, the, the making of these. Um, the two, there will be two new models of the switch coming this year, again, from the wall street journal. This is not too long ago. Uh, one is actually going to be beefed up and then one that is less expensive with a new look. Now, now there's some other stuff as well, uh, that I didn't find at Nintendo life. Uh, as an example, Eurogamer in March of 2019 actually gave us quite a few details. Uh, they gave us, um, here, here's basically the details they gave. The, the Eurogamer actually gave very specific details about the mini. Uh, so we're going to actually spend a lot of this talking about this. Uh, so in March of 2019, Eurogamer expanded upon the Wall Street Journal report of the two models. And they said this is what's going to happen. One, that one of the models is going to be a cheaper model. Uh, it is going to be replacing the 3DS. So the goal of it was, hey, once 3DS is done, this is what replaces that. 
Uh, it'll be offering a more 2DS like value, not 2DS in terms of, oh, you know, pricing per se, but 2DS in terms of comparative to the original device. So cutting back features comparative to the original price and offering a significant discount for doing that. Um, cost driven down by removing the features, it would be sturdier, rumble would be removed, and it would be handheld only, which basically means no Joy-Cons, handheld only. Uh, no removable Joy-Cons anyways. And all of that is exactly what we got. We got what is basically a 2DS. Uh, we got um, the cost driven down by removing features. It's sturdier because it doesn't have removable Joy-Cons. Uh, the rumble is gone, and it is handheld only. Basically, Eurogamer point for point for point nailed everything. Okay. Next, they talked about the Switch Pro. And this is maybe the most useful detail we have. Remember, Wall Street Journal, who also got everything right with the Switch Mini, now known as the Switch Lite, uh, they ended up um, talking about screen technology. Eurogamer mentioned something very interesting. It says uh, the beefed-up Switch, which is the more powerful Switch, uh, will have a new 3DS-style bump in performance and will be dockable. Now, this is important to note because it means, one, it's probably still a portable switch that can be docked, but uh, what's important to note here is that this inc includes a, an increase in performance. Now, NVIDIA uh, did announce that they have shrunk down Tegra X1s out there coming to the next NVIDIA Shields. So we know shrunk down Tegra X1s exist, and actually, believe it or not, with the announcement of the Switch Lite, based on people who have gone hands-on and talked to Nintendo representatives, the Switch Lite is using that shrunk down Tegra X1. So the Switch Lite's already using a quote-unquote better, like, better period, better internals, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, but we don't know what they're clocked at. I'm guessing for the Switch Mini, the clock speeds are pretty close to the original speeds of the Switch, just in a smaller form factor with lower power draw, hence probably a similar size battery, but but longer battery length, an hour plus for Switch Lite. Uh, if you guys want to know more about Switch Lite, by the way, check out my, my video up here um, on that. I did a, I did a nice little 40-minute deep dive into it. But uh, what's interesting here is they said new 3DS style bump in performance. Now, the new 3DS was not an insignificant bump in performance. I think people, uh, just because of the power spectrum that 3DS sits on, think that, oh, the new 3DS wasn't a big deal. It was a huge deal. It doubled the RAM. Can you imagine Switch doubling RAM going from 4 gigs to 8? That is a massive change. And we know from developers that there are dev units that have 8 gigs on it. So it's not... Like it's impossible for there to be eight gigs on the switch. Uh, in addition to that, they they increased the CPU clocks and the GPU clocks massively. This is why some games just run better on on, on the new 3DS. Xenoblade Chronicles period only runs on the new 3DS. But if you look at something like Hyrule Warriors Legends on the original 3DS, it runs so poorly you might as well not play it. You can literally see like individual frames. That's how bad the stutter is. But on the new 3DS, it runs like a dream. In fact, it runs so well on the new 3DS, it actually gives you better frame rate performance than Hyrule Warriors does on Wii U, if you can believe that or not. And the Wii U is a more powerful platform. So I don't know what that means, but they obviously were able to optimize it very well for that technology. A bump like that would be a pro style bump. Uh, this is where people were talking about, oh, oh it's not going to be like a PlayStation 4 Pro. It's not going to be like an Xbox One X. No, it's not going to be as significant. Like the Xbox One X took you from 1080p to some semblance of 4K. The, the, the PlayStation, you know, or I'm sorry, the Nintendo Switch Pro or whatever they call it, the new Nintendo Switch, isn't going to take you from 1080p, you know, up to 4K. Like, that's not happening. There's not going to be that kind of leap. But what they are going to do is give you more stable frame rates, keep resolutions at closer to 1080p, uh, and give more ability for bigger games to potentially come over to the platform. And it's weird because we're already getting The Witcher 3, so, like, how much bigger does it get, right? Uh, so it, it's just something to consider, something I want to throw out there that, yes, these places that nailed all these things about Switch Mini have given us details on the Switch Pro that now we have some validity to actually say they might be true. So what do we know about Switch Pro? It's going to be more powerful. That's the big thing. It's going to be more powerful, and we know the leap is comparable to the new Nintendo 3DS. So double the RAM, faster clock speed GPU, faster clock speed CPU, all that stuff. Uh, maybe bigger internal storage because there was bigger internal storage on the uh, new Nintendo 3DS as well, so that's something to take into consideration. Uh, and on top of that, on top of all of that, new screen technology. Uh, not OLED. It is specific that it's not OLED, but maybe it's IPS 
Maybe it's a glass front, um, you know, instead of being the plastic. Maybe there's no bezels, right? These are all things that are possible on the Nintendo Switch Pro. They could have took this and made it better. Uh, so I just want to throw this out there. Obviously, this is a, just a repeat and a regurgitation of information we've already put out there. But I thought it was interesting to look at it and just figure out what exactly do we know about the Pro based on all these places that were right about the Nintendo Switch Lite. Uh, anyways, you guys let me know what you think about all this information down in the comments below because I am excited for Nintendo Switch Lite, even though I'm not buying one for myself, uh, maybe my son. And I am also really excited about the potential of the Nintendo Switch Pro. Uh, if you're wondering about release dates, again, Wall Street Journal has claimed multiple times that the Nintendo Switch Pro is also arriving this year. So that's a factoid to kind of throw there. Wall Street Journal is like, hey, look, it's coming this year. Uh, and we'll see. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that, but we'll see. It, it, that's, that's what they're saying. So we haven't heard anything about a 2020 date. It's all been 2019. So, hey, you know what? We could end up with a $400 Switch Pro coming out for the holidays. Who really knows, right? Uh, but Nintendo. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, obviously, uh, man, my, my mind is still swimming from the light. You guys let me know your opinions on the light, on the pro, on all these uh, various places reporting on all this stuff. Because the bottom line is, uh, over the past year, I've gotten a lot of flack. There's been a lot of people saying, why are you reporting on Wall Street Journal? Then you know they got the Zelda Netflix thing wrong? Why are you reporting Eurogamer? Don't you know they, they push that gamer FPS agenda? Why are you reporting on this? Why are you reporting? Nick A has got things. Like, you know why we report on this stuff? Because sometimes it's right. And when it's right, it's usually way right. And in this case, three independent, reliable places were 100% right on the Nintendo Switch Lite, which means they might be right on the Nintendo Switch Pro as well. So let's just keep that in mind. All right, folks, thank you for tuning in. Drop a like on this video, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch each and every one of you guys in the next video.